Hello and welcome to today's lab. Within your VCL session, navigate to the Blackboard Government 300 course webpage, and along the left-hand menu, choose Data. And under the full versions of the Pollock data, select the NES 2008 data set, and you'll be prompted to either open or save that data set. Click Open, and start your session of SPSS. Today's lab is an introduction to basic univariate analysis in SPSS. So far, we've learned the basic layout and features of SPSS, and also how to enter data into SPSS from a survey. From today's lab video throughout the rest of the course, we'll be using SPSS to analyze data. For instance, building frequency distribution tables, creating graphs, and eventually testing hypotheses using statistical techniques. So let's get started. First, recall from Professor Daigle's lecture videos the relationship between concepts or ideas and variables, empirical reference. For instance, democracy is a concept and ways to measure democracy, i.e. voting, free press, level of industrialization, are variables. So we would define a variable as an empirical measurement of a concept. Furthermore, recall that all variables are measured at a particular level. The level of measurement for a variable is a crucial step in determining what information we can gather about that variable. Recall that our levels of measurement are nominal, ordinal, and interval ratio level. <clears throat> Here are two helpful tables to illustrate how level of measurement is important in determining what information we can gather about a particular variable. The two tables below list the levels of measurement in the rows and what information you can gather from each and the columns. You can see that for nominal variables, we can only get the mode and the V-ratio. For instance, or for interval ratio variables, we can get all measurements of central location and dispersion. So let's illustrate a nominal level variable in SPSS. All right, in the NES 2008 data set, go to Analyze and Descriptive Statistics, slide over to Frequencies, and then sort your variables by name and alphabetize them to make it easier to navigate through this list of variables. And we're going to select the variable called employee status. Select that variable and slide it over to the variable pane. And click on the statistics button and since this is a nominal level of measurement, we're going to select mode as this is the only appropriate measurement for central tendency. So click continue and then OK. Now this will produce a basic cumulative percent frequency table for this variable, employment status. Now remember the nominal level of measurement communicates differences between units of analysis on the characteristic being measured or it organizes responses into categories where rank and order do not matter. For instance, region, religion, marital status, or in our case, employment status. In this case, it doesn't make sense to think of these categories here as having rank or order. Rather, they simply organize the observations into categories based on employment status. In the frequency table, we can look at the number of categories for our variable and it has eight categories. It appears to have the majority of data spread between two categories, the working now and retired. And we chose mode because we knew that our variable is measured at the nominal level, and this is the only appropriate measurement of central location. If we look at the statistics box above the frequency table, we see that SPSS is telling us that our mode is one. Now recall that computers operate with the numbers you assign to each category. For example, using the employee status variable, emphasize that the mode is not one, but the category that corresponds to one, which is working now. And if you look down in the frequency table, you can see that uh, working now, the first category, is clearly the modal category at 1434 observations. Note that SPSS will not calculate the V-ratio, the only appropriate measurement of dispersion for a nominal variable. For your assignments, you'll have to calculate the V-ratio yourself. Remember, the V-ratio is the proportion of cases falling outside the modal category. Now, let's illustrate an ordinal variable. So close out of your output for now, and head back up to Analyze, 
descriptive statistics and frequencies and take your employee status variable out of the variable pane. And we're going to choose education level in three categories or edu R3. Select that variable, click on statistics. And this is an ordinal variable. So in addition to mode, we're going to get the median. Click on quartiles, range, minimum, maximum, and then click continue. And click OK to generate a frequency table. So remember that ordinal level measurement is defined as communicating relative differences between units of analysis. Most importantly, ordinal variables have values that can be ranked and ordered. In SPSS, this ranking process is reflected in the variable's numeric codes. In the case of this variable, we're measuring level of education in three categories. Zero years of education to 11 years is one category. 12 years of education is the second category. And 13 or more years of education is the third category. And moving up to the statistics box, notice how SPSS calculates your measurements using the numbers that correspond to the category labels. Remember, as a researcher, you have to notice this and correct this when reporting your measurements. For ordinal variables, if there are category labels in your variable, always report the category labels and not the corresponding number. For instance, for this variable measuring education level in three categories, our mode would not be three, but rather the third category, which is 13 or more years of education. This is also the case for all the other measurements of center location and dispersion. All right, and minimize out of this output. And now let's look at a interval ratio level of measurement. Go back up to analyze and descriptive statistics and frequencies. And we're going to take the education in three categories out of a variable pane. And we're going to select the edu underscore r variable into our variable pane. Click on statistics. And since this is a ratio level of measurement, we're going to select the mean, standard deviation, and the variance, and click continue. All right, maximize your output window. Now remember, interval ratio is defined as communicating the exact differences between units of analysis, for instance, age or income. Exact numeric values allow you to measure the precise differences between units of analysis. Furthermore, remember that ratio and interval are the same with one important exception. With ratio variables, a zero value has real meaning. It means the absence of the value being measured. So in the case of our variable, years of education, since zero is a category with real meaning, i.e. it means that someone has no years of education, this variable is measured at the ratio level. So what are the measurements for this variable? Navigate up to the statistics box. Notice that with ratio variables, we can get every measurement of central location and dispersion. Thus, in addition to the measurements we generated with our ordinal variables, SPSS now calculates a mean, variance, and a standard deviation. To conclude, we've looked at an example of each level of measurement in SPSS and discussed how to use SPSS to calculate the appropriate statistics for each. The next videos you should watch are the videos where Aaron explains how to create publication quality tables and graphics using SPSS and desktop applications. We'll see you then.